Hey, this is Griffith CNM, problem 1.8. Uh, starting with part A. Prove that the two dimensional rotation matrix in equation 1.29, which I've written right here, preserves dot products. That is, show that the, the transformed um, components, the, the dot product of the transformed vectors, are equal uh, to those of before they're transformed. All right, so this is what we're going to show right here. All right, so what we're gonna do is just take out, or, um, we're just gonna plug in the full expressions for these in terms of these. And we'll see that it simplifies down uh, to these. So um, a y, a y, um, the transformed vector here is equal to a y cosine phi plus a z sine phi, like that. And multiply that by b, so just replace these a's by b's and you get the same thing, so e y cosine plus bz sine of phi, okay, and then plus, and then same here, except to get the z's, we take this, these, multiplied by the bottom row here. All right, so a y times minus sine of phi, um, plus a z, Cosine v v y times minus sine v plus v z cosine v like that. All right. So all I've done is taken this side here, and then based on the, this equation from the book, I've filled in the full. Uh, form. So hopefully I have enough space on the page. Um, Alright, so A, Y, B, so I'm taking these two terms together, y, and this is cosine squared, B, and now I'll take this term times this term, A, Y, cosine, And then these last two terms. Sines will combine into a plus and take sine squared and get sine squared of phi. Alright, this time we have, so now we'll take, say, this one times uh, this one. Y. So we have this minus sign here, so sine phi, phi, z, cosine. This term now. Now we'll move to these two. Uh, so minus a z b y um, cosine. Yeah, it kind of did this in a different order this time. Hopefully it's still clear. Okay, now this one times this one plus a z b z cosine squared b. All right, so now we find how they will cancel out. Um, 
Uh, so we have this a z b y sine of b cosine of b, and here's an a z b y sine of b cosine of b. So this one and this one will go away. A y b z sine of b cosine of b, and a y b z. So this one minus sine, we'll subtract out and cancel with that one. And now we can combine terms with the sine squared, or, well, let's do it with the, um, just for the heck, um, we'll just gather the a, y, b, y terms together, and the a, z, b, z terms. So, terrible noise, a, y, b, y, and then we have a cosine squared, b plus sine squared, B plus A Z B Z. Same thing. Cosine squared of B plus sine squared of B. Alright, now sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So this is 1. This whole term is 1. This whole term is 1 as well equals to a y b y plus a z b z which is right here a y b y plus a z b z a y b y plus a z b z we just proved the statement so um that just means and this is in two dimensions but any uh dot product between two vectors and this plane, um, the dot product will be invariant um, with uh, rotation in the plane. So that all makes sense, and that's the end of part A. So here's um, uh, part B of 1.8. All right, what constraints must the elements R sub i j of the three-dimensional rotation matrix equation 1.30? Okay, so this is equation 1.30 in the book. What must the what must the elements satisfy in order to preserve the length of A for all vectors A? All right, so um, basically we start by looking at what is meant by the length of A. And um, the magnitude squared is equal just to the dot product of A with itself. So, um, I guess if we want to look at, um, like, what does this dot product mean or in, in this way of writing it? So if we were to just look at the, the vector before we transform it, what would this look like? Well, it would be a row vector. Like this, multiplied by a column vector. this. So when you do this uh, multiplication, this dot product, you end up with ax squared plus a y squared plus a z squared, which we know if we take the magnitude, it's just the square root of that. So this uh, sum underneath the um, radical there has to be constant if we want this uh, magnitude to be constant. So again, the we want to know what constraints this matrix has to satisfy in order to preserve this length or the magnitude of a, any a. All right. So, um, so what we did here is uh, to get this row vector, we took the transpose of this column vector. So, could 
sort of write this as a transpose a like that. Hope I'm not on too shaky ground um, mathematically writing it that way. Um, so um, this is uh, what we say has to be constant in order for the length to be unchanged. So in order for, um, so we're going to say the length is unchanged and then find out what this, what has to happen with this matrix. So what that looks like is we're going to have the rotated vector over here on this side. Um, it's uh, length or inner product like this is going to have to be equal to a before it was rotated. The rotation doesn't change the length. That's what we're going for here. All right. So if we if we now look at how uh, this matrix equation, let's write that out this way. I'm going to call um, this one R. As a, just a matrix called R, and then here's a, so just kind of writing it out um, in shorthand here, um, at least a lot shorter than this. Alright, so basically what this is equal to is, if I plug this RA into each of these, this and this is transpose and then we have RA again. Alright, so one thing we know about matrices is if we have RA transpose um, that is equal to um, R transpose A except we flip the order so so R transpose A transpose is what I meant to say except we flip the order so it's A transpose R transpose like that. Alright, so this is actually equal to um, a transpose r transpose and then r a like this. Alright, so um, here we have uh, the a, the original a transpose and the original a just like what we have back here. So basically what the condition that this R matrix has to satisfy is this middle piece just has to go away, it has to become the identity matrix. So that's the, that's the condition, R transpose R equals the identity matrix. This is the condition that this matrix has to satisfy in order to preserve the length of any vector um, that it rotates. And there's a special name for this. Unitary matrix. And um, so a whole bunch of uh, probably special properties apply to unitary matrix as far as, or unitary matrices as far as um, their rows constituting an orthonormal set or their columns constituting an orthonormal set, um, or basis, I guess, you'd say. Um, so um, there's a lot of extra properties that go along with these, and it all becomes very important in quantum mechanics as well.